Uh, my name is Zachary Alexander Gartrell. I'm an electrical engineering major, and we are working on our senior design project, which is optimizing the wind belt. So MIT did one of these beforehand. Um, they had a different system, though, where they had a coil down here and a magnet on the belt. We said, well, in our mind, it makes more sense to change it if we put the coil on the belt it should work better and so that was the origin of our idea for our project and we've kind of built off it from there trying to make it better than basically beat MIT. The idea that wind can make something shake originated in the 1930s at something called the Tacoma Narrows Bridge and that's where uh, wind caused an entire bridge to fall apart because it was causing it to vibrate like this. And so that phenomena was later characterized as what's called aeroelastic flutter. And so ours is basically a miniature version of what happened there. Uh, the wind blows across it and causes it to shake. And then we have coils mounted here on the end and they vibrate in the magnetic field, which makes electricity come out through here. So we did some computer simulations on this system to find out what we could do to make it vibrate better. And we found out that putting tension on the belt increases the frequency that it vibrates at. So that's where we came up with the idea of hanging weights off of the end. Uh, the final design is going to have a kind of like a tuning peg, kind of like you have on a guitar, so we can finally tune the tension to optimize the vibrations. Coolest things I think about this design is that it's able to be implemented inside an urban environment. You see a wind turbine is very large and is very unfit. It'll take up way too much room, makes a lot of noise, and it's potentially dangerous. The cool thing about this device is that it's able to be installed virtually anywhere, and if it is in a city, it can be installed very high where wind is fast and almost constant, so it then can be producing energy pretty much constantly. Right now, it uh, is producing a maximum of 12 milliwatts of energy or power. And so we're looking to improve that uh, as the semester goes on though. So the biggest challenge is that this phenomenon, while it's easy to cause to happen, is very poorly understood mathematically. So being able to take inputs of tension and wind speed and material properties, we still cannot accurately predict the behavior of the belt using those inputs. So there's no function that exists for it, no mathematical model yet. Uh, hopefully by the end of this we'll have at least a first pass of what a mathematical model would look like. So if we can figure out a way to make these produce a lot of power for really cheap, we could start seeing them built into the architecture of buildings. So that, um, you know, along with solar panels on the roof, you could have wind belts running all along down the sides of them and have uh, everyone producing a lot of their power locally and reduce the strains on power plants.